Armando Hasurungan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasurungan. Here, please like, and you can also ask questions, answer some questions, and post some interesting things such as artworks. And please change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. And in this video, we're going to talk about hemostasis. Now, hemostasis comes from the Greek words blood and stagnation, or halting. And hemostasis can essentially be divided into three major parts. Vasospasm, or vasoconstriction, platelet plug formation, and coagulation. Now, these three steps are important to know. The coagulation cascade is a bit more complex, and involves various chemicals known as clotting factors. But we won't go into that, we'll just look at the overview of hemostasis and the three processes shown here. So let's look at an example of hemostasis. Let's just say a bull or cow or whatnot has hit you, unfortunately. And let's zoom into this injured area here. The injury has caused a tear in the blood vessels. And then the injured cells surrounding it begin to expose collagen. We also have smooth muscles around the blood vessels, and we have many types of cells um, in our skin. Now, before going onto the process of hemostasis, let's see what we find inside the blood. We find erythrocytes, the red blood cells, which with other proteins begin going out, gushing out uh, through the injured site. Other things found in the blood, which we will talk uh, and look into later on, are the clotting factors, platelets, von Willebrand factors, prothrombin, and fibrinogen. Now don't be overwhelmed by the name because we will learn about them slowly step by step. So now what first happens in hemostasis is vasospasm, also known as vasoconstriction. The blood vessels have to contract in order to save and reduce blood from gushing out. But how do the smooth muscles know when to contract? Well, there are three main ways. Firstly, cells around the injured area, particularly the endothelial cells, will be begin secreting signals, telling the smooth muscles to contract, enhancing vasoconstriction. Then, our own nerve reflexes will cause uh, the smooth muscles to contract, further enhancing vasoconstriction. And also, we have myogenic spasm, which um, causes the smooth muscles to contract, and so the blood vessels to contract. So all these three ways enhance vasoconstriction to reduce blood flow. Now you might have heard me say vasodilation in my immunology, immunology videos, but vasodilation tends to occur to non-injured vessels so that we can have more white blood cells going to the infiltrated area where the pathogen is. Vasoconstriction occurs to injured blood vessels to reduce blood flow. Okay, now let's go back. So here again we have the blood vessels from a different sort of view, except probably easier. And here we have the endothelial cells and the injured site. Surrounding the blood vessel we have smooth muscles. Now if you remember what we find in the blood vessels, we found erythrocytes, red blood cells, which begin gushing out through the injured site. We also find von Willebrand factors and platelets, also known as thrombocytes. We also find many clotting factors, prothrombin and fibrinogen here. Right now, we will look at the first three, concentrate on the first three. Following vasospasm, when the blood vessels contract to reduce blood flow, we have the second step of hemostasis, platelet plug, plug formation, where platelets form a temporary pl plug to reduce blood flow out of our body. Platelet plug formation can be divided into four parts, starting with platelet adhesion, where von Willebrand factors assist platelets, the thrombocytes, to attach to the injured uh, cells, the injured site. And platelets bind easily onto the exposed collagen. Erythrocytes are also trapped in this matrix sort of thing. So essentially you can say that von Willebrand factors help bind platelets with the exposed collagen. The next step of platelet plug formation is platelet release reaction. And this is where the platelets begin releasing chemicals to attract more platelets to the area to join the party, as well as increasing vasoconstriction. The chemicals released by the platelets are adenosine biphosphate, which, in, which tells more platelets to come, and also serotonin and thromboxin A2, not prothrombin A2, that's a mistake. And this increases vasospasm and also tells more platelet to come, known as platelet aggregation. 
which is our third step in platelet plug formation. And platelet aggregation is basically when a lot of platelets start clumping together, sort of sealing off the area. And then this will lead to a plug formation, which is our final step of the platelet plug formation process. Which you might ask yourself, what if the platelets start building up uh, to, to make a massive clump, and then platelets begin aggregating uh, to other types of cells, such as the healthy cells, the non-injured cells. Well, this does not happen because the healthy cells secrete some chemicals, such as nitrous oxide and other prostaglandins, and this will prevent platelets to adhere to those healthy cells, and so does not form a platelet plug of, of any sort. Okay, so the platelets and thrombocytes are created a temporary plug to stop the bleeding. However, this plug is not very strong, and so further processes are required to further strengthen this plug, such as clotting factors. And this, where, this is where our third step of hemostasis comes in, which is coagulation. And this involves the clotting factors to further strengthen the plug that was formed by the platelets. Let's have a look. Okay, so going back from the beginning, we first of all had vasospasm or vasoconstriction to reduce the blood flow. And this is where the smooth muscles contract to contract the blood vessels. Then we had the von Willebrand factors, uh, which, uh, which allows platelets or thrombocytes to form a platelet plug formation um, on the exposed collagen. And this causes the blood and other proteins to go out ever more slowly. After platelet plug formation, we have coagulation, also known as clotting. And this involves the clotting factors, prothrombin, and fibrinogen, which we will look into now. What essentially coagulation does is that it enhances and strengthens the plug formed by the thrombocytes, the platelets, by creating a fibrin mesh, which strengthens the whole plug. You can think of this process as a liquid around the platelets plug, firstly turning into the fibrin mesh, or gel, after coagulation which then seals the damaged vessels very nicely. Now to form this gel, this, which is the fibrin mesh, it requires a number of complex processes involving many clotting factors and procoagulants. But for now, we will just look at the overview. And so this complex clotting process can be divided into three main steps in coagulation. So the first step, because the blood vessels are injured and platelets have aggregated, a series of reactions involving many clotting factors occur. Now there are two pathways involving these clotting factors, the intrinsic and extrinsic pathways. Both pathways, however, result in the same substance, prothrombinase, or also known as prothrombin activator, which, are, which is an enzyme. And I will draw prothrombinase as the squiggly blue thing here. And so we have many of the squiggly blue prothrombinase around here. Now the second step of coagulation is where the prothrombinase, the squiggly blue thing, with some calcium ions actually catalyze the conversion of prothrombin, this green stuff, into thrombin. So here we have prothrombin, this big green thing, which gets catalyzed into thrombin, this green, small green thing. And so we have many thrombins now. And then the third part of coagulation is when thrombin, which was just catalyzed from prothrombin, with again some calcium ions, acts as an enzyme to convert fibrinogen into fibrin. So now we, this fibrinogen, this big orange thing, will get converted into fibrin. So now this fibrin is all around this injured site here. And this fibrin, these fibrin fibers, will stick to everything else around there, the erythrocytes and the thrombocytes, the platelets, to form essentially a sort of meshwork. And this meshwork will essentially later form a stable clot. So as you can see, with the help of vasoconstriction, which reduces blood flow, and the platelet plug formation, which forms a temporary plug, and then coagulation, which, which uh, forms a fibrin meshwork, which will, these three steps will essentially form a stable clot, which will then heal in time. And so when this blood vessel is healed, then blood flow can return back to normal and so blood can be supplied once again to the surrounding tissues. Hope you enjoyed this video on hemostasis. Please comment, like and share and subscribe. Thank you very much.